So we're all done with glucose. And like we said, once we're done with glucose, we're gonna use that as a backbone and see how other things fit in there. This video is gonna be all about the other monosaccharides and how that fits in to the backbone. Do you remember what the other monosaccharides are? Those are your galactose, those are your fructose. Okay, so we're using this backbone. This is part of glycolysis. We're gonna see how galactose fits in there first. So galactose immediately gets phosphorylated to galactose 1-phosphate. Why do we do that? It's to trap it in the cell, correct? And the thing that does it is galactokinase. Ring a bell? And in regular galactose levels, that works fine. And if there's too much, it recruits a friend. Who do you think that friend is? That'll be your aldose reductase. That's, remember, turns sugars into its alcohol alternative. Tells it, you know, just chill for a bit. Once we're finished, we'll let you back in. Turns that into galactiol. Just keep that in mind. Now you have G1P, and that re enters the cycle via uridyl transferase. That's it. That's how it works. Now, again, as clinicians, we're not really concerned about how it works normally. We're more concerned about when it can go wrong. So let's see how it can go wrong. You can have galactokinase deficiency. And this will appear immediately once you start feeding. Remember, galactose and glucose makes lactose. Lactose is found in breast milk, found in formula. So as soon as that baby starts feeding, they're going to have problems if they have something wrong with their galactose pathway. So if you have galactose deficiency, you can't phosphorylate it. You can't trap it in a cell. So that galactose is going to leave. You're going to have galactosemia. You're going to have osmotic damage to your eyes and cause cataracts. Now here is how the boards ask it. Talk about a baby that starts feeding, and then suddenly the mom notices that it doesn't track things with his eyes. So it's just kind of staring blankly. Or it's lacking a social smile. No social smell. You know how parents will play peekaboo, trying to get his smile. It doesn't smile, it doesn't track things with his eyes. It doesn't do those things because it can't see. It has cataracts. Usually somewhat, somewhat minor, you just kind of limit the lactose and the galactose in the diet. What isn't minor is if you have a urinal transferase deficiency. Why isn't it minor? Well, this deficiency, urinal transferase deficiency, causes phosphate trapping. What does that mean? Well, first step is galactose, getting phosphorylated G1P, correct? And that traps it there. Phosphate is a valuable commodity. A lot of things need phosphate, but we're saying we're putting phosphate on here because it's important. We want it to go into the cycle. Well, if you're lacking this, if you're lacking this enzyme, then it can't go in that cycle. So we're putting all these valuable phosphates on, but it's giving us no reward. That is phosphate trapping. And that is why it is more severe. This, is, this causes retardation cataracts, death. One last thing, something that's common to both of them, while you can't use galactose, bacteria sure can. So E. coli sepsis is common. Put it all together, let's say a baby starts feeding, mom notices that there's failure to thrive, lack of a social smile, what is the baby at risk for? E. coli sepsis? That'd be a nice bored question. So that's galactose. Let's move on to fructose. Next up is fructose. Fructose is very similar to galactose. Fructose is found in fruit juices, honey. So if a baby starts feeding breast from breast milk and is doing fine and then all of a sudden the mother introduces things like honey, things like fruit juices, and then the baby takes a dive, that should trigger some suspicion, okay? The pathway, very, very similar. Fructose comes in. gets phosphorylated to fructose 1-phosphate via 
fructokinase. Hopefully these are starting to make more sense to you. That traps it, stops it from leaving. That goes to DHP, enters the cycle that way via aldolase B. That's it. So what can go wrong? You tell me, there's only two enzymes. This can go wrong and this can go wrong. So fructokinase deficiency, pretty much benign. You can't trap it in the first place, so you just kind of pee out any excess. Try and limit the fructose, try and limit the, the fruit juice. Baby, should be fine. Aldolase B, aldolase B deficiency, however, more severe. Why? Phosphate trapping. There's that term again. So aldolase B, you're going to have failure to thrive, hypoglycemia, and that, again, is all due to the phosphate trapping. Again, try and limit the, the fruct fructose, the fruit juices, the honey. One last thing, the boards like this. When you do a urine for sugar, it only detects glucose. If you're trying to detect the other sugars, you need to add reducing sugar to that urine test. Understand? That does it for the extra sugars. Thanks for watching.